the general idea of Newton's method is to first assume I have an initial guess that is close enough to the true solution, which here is a perfect example of the case. Because I know when delta t is small enough, my un plus 1 should be close enough to un, right? Okay, so I have an initial guess, which is un to un plus 1. That should be pretty close. And then Newton's method just uh, keeps performing Taylor series expansion on the best guess I have. Okay, and in the case that my initial guess is actually pretty close, the get best guess should always be the latest solution. But as you said, that's not always the case if my initial guess is actually far away. So, so usually people start the Newton's iteration with something that is not exactly what Newton proposed, which is kind of taking the averages and things like that, taking a step that is not always the full step. But, but continue, as, as soon as I enter the call the uh, region of attraction, switch to Newton's method, it gives you the fastest uh, convergence you can imagine. Is there a way to know when you reach that point? So, like how do you know the region of attraction? How do you know the region of attraction? That's actually the trickiest question in implementing Newton's iteration. So the, the way to knew that, know that is you have to do something called a line search. So you basically search the line between uh, you have to search the line between u i minus one and u i to figure out is it better to stop halfway or is it better to go all the way to here by by computing how equal that formula is. So so if going all the way to the new best guess, um, I'm having the best residual, then go all the way. If it's better to stop halfway, then stop half halfway. So that's a uh, that's kind of a Newton's iteration with a line search. That's a, but that then it, computationally is not usually the best uh, um, approach because then you are keeping evaluating the f uh, on many points, right? So so there is usually a kind of a trade-off between between robustness, which you have to do the line search, versus efficiency, which maybe sometimes you would rather just apply Newton's method, and if you fail, just cut the time step. All right. Uh, okay, almost out of time. So how do we do the same thing for a system of ODEs? What if I have a U, a vector of n plus 1 minus u as a vector of delta t equal to f of u n plus 1 as a vector. So here f is also going to be a vector. Right? Is there a variation of Newton's method for a system of equations? Yes? Uh, you can do the Taylor series, but instead of the derivative, you use the matrix of partial derivatives? Yes. Instead of the derivative here, you can still do Taylor series expansion. You can still do something like this. And this is actually exactly the same formula you would use, except for here, you have to write the this after this, because this dfu is now a matrix, right? So you have to write this approximately equal to f of un plus uh, here I also have to write partial f partial u I mean this is the first time we have partial derivatives which you will see all the time as we switch to PDEs because I have multiple f's I have multiple u's each this is a matrix right so each entry in the matrix is going to be d f i d u j all right and uh, uh, this is going to be dfi duj plus 1, etc. This is going to be dfi plus 1 duj. So each column corresponds to a different u. Each row corresponds to a different f. Okay? This times the vector of un plus 1 minus un. 
This is still a linear equation, but now it's a system of linear equations or it's a matrix equation. To solve this, you have to pull these two unknown terms to the left hand side. You have, instead of 1 over delta t, you have 1 over delta t. Right here, you have identity over delta t times this, right? And here you have to minus the matrix, right? This is equal to uh, f of un. Um, duh, duh, duh. Uh, okay, so let me write this uh, plus un divided by delta t and uh, plus this times un. All right, so we have to solve a matrix system to compute the next uh, guess. Of course, this is just uh, my first guess, and I want to continue iterating. So, so basically, you can use implicit schemes in solving nonlinear equations. It's just a lot more involved. And you have to compute this guy, right? If it's a, if it's a, uh, if it's a vector equation. And now, you may start to wonder, how does MATLAB solve stiff systems using implicit methods? if MATLAB only have access to your function f. How, I mean, MATLAB, ha, you are gonna give MATLAB a subroutine to compute this guy, right? But you didn't give MATLAB anything to compute this guy. You know, how does MATLAB get this guy, which it needs to solve implicit equations? It computes this numerically. Just remember our first lecture deriving schemes to approximate du dt. This is dfdu, not du dt, but it's the same, right? You just have to take steps not in t, but in u. And if u is a vector, you need to take different steps in u, one in each dimension to compute all of these derivatives. So that is why if you use an implicit solver in MATLAB, Unless your system is very stiff, otherwise it'll be much slower than if you use explicit methods. And we'll see uh, in the next lecture, like what's the trade-off on this. We'll use uh, some MATLAB stiff solvers versus non-stiff solvers on various systems to figure out when it is actually worth the trouble of computing this. And not just computing this, you have to solve multiple linear systems, right, to actually perform even one time step. As opposed to using explicit, you don't need to solve any linear system to just get to the next time step. All right, so I will see you on Wednesday.